special for us. And um, maybe you already got what he had for you. Maybe today already in the worship time or in fellowship um, he's spoken to your heart and you've received something that he had for you. Or maybe it's still to come. I do believe that through the word today he's going to speak to our hearts. Um, we're going to continue our Fruit of the Spirit series today. <clears throat> So, did anybody look at your cards last week? Those of you who were here last Sunday, have you looked at your cards this week? Yes. 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 Yeah. Man, that was that was awesome. That was awesome. You guys yeah. made that service last week one of my favorite services since we had Transformation House. Just to watch your interaction and then to read what you wrote to one another. And if you missed it, you missed it. You'll have to ask somebody <laughs> what happened and um, and get in on it. But today we're going to continue that series. Um, last week our, our um, fruit was the fruit of kindness. This week the fruit of goodness. And Pastor Amber is going to come share the word with us this morning. So would you honor her um, and welcome her as she comes to share the word this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I'm here because I love Jesus. Amen. I love being a part of his people. Um, I love being a part of this church. I'm telling you, I I get so excited when I come to church. And you think that that will wear off sometimes? You think you'll get over it like it's just church, but nah, not here. <laughs> I come to church because I love this place. I will learn at this place, and my life is changed at this place. Um, and I love I love the word. I love the teaching. I love the way, this this series has been great, right? Yes. yes. Fruits of the Spirit. Like, it's really been life-changing, um, very practical, correct? Yes. Um, have you thinking about it all week long? We, we are learning tools um, Sunday after Sunday about these fruits that we really can apply to our lives. And yeah, some, some people might walk through the door and, and feel like we're not having much church. We're just having, like, a teaching lesson or something. Well, that's okay, because I've been to a lot of church and they can receive nothing. But I come here and I really, truly receive a word that changes my life. And that is what this is supposed to do. So I'm excited to be here today. Um, I can promise you it, it was aching and hurting as I was preparing this word because I was preaching and teaching to myself. And I uh, stepped on my own toes. And I haven't learned it all yet. But just know that as you receive the word on today, I am receiving the word, and I am adjusting some things in my life as well. So, um, no perfect preacher up here. I don't, I don't think I ever will be, and I need y'all to be okay with that. Um, we are all yes. imperfect people, and we are perfect because we love Jesus and know him. Um, so, fruits of spirit. What are the fruits that we've learned so far? Joy, love, love joy, love, patience, love, joy, patience, peace. Kindness. Kindness. There we go. Um, fruits of the spirit. What's the key word there? Spirit, right? In my opinion, that's the key word. Uh, these fruits sound amazing. Love, joy, peace, kindness, things like that. But um, that's difficult to have when you don't have the, the last part of that, and that's the spirit. And, um, you know, when I was thinking of that, I, I, I think about the many people places, relationships, things like that, that I have unequally yoked myself expecting those things, love and peace and patience and, and self-control and all of those things. I, I've expected that and, and I've been disappointed because I didn't receive it, but I unequally yoked in places and with people that don't have the spirit. So um, that's not my word for today. I just, I just wanted to share that as I was thinking. Um, Consider the places that you surround yourself or the people that you surround yourself with and make sure that they have 
the, the spirit that, that you say that you have so that you won't always be left disappointed, empty. Um, these, these fruits of the spirit, love, especially love and, and peace, you know. I've, I've dealt with a lot of people that, that don't have a lot of love and don't have a lot of peace. And um, they, they, they wrecked my life a little bit. But I can take responsibility in that because I chose to surround myself with people that aren't equally yoked with me. Um, that's not the word, but is that a good word? Yes. 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 Amen. Um, so in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When you hear these fruits... Who or what do you do you off the top think of? Anybody gonna say my keyword? Huh? I heard it. I heard the is Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you was scared. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. It sounds like Jesus. And and if this is if we're supposed to have these fruits of the spirit, I, I say we're supposed to be like Jesus. Jesus died on the cross. And, and left us with his spirit so that we can walk and roam the earth and be like him. Be like Jesus. These, these words, they, these fruits, they're beautiful. You know, when, you, when you receive it and, and even when you give it, you tr I, I feel beautiful when I, when I give love and when I give patience and when I give joy. I feel beautiful. Do y'all feel beautiful when y'all do those things? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah, so when we, when we implement our fruit, and when we receive our fruit, it does something to us, and it, it, it reminds us of Jesus. Fruits of the Spirit is like Jesus. Um, be like Jesus. When you think of goodness, because goodness is the fruit that we're talking about today, um, what's some words that come to mind? With goodness? Yes. What's some other words that might mean goodness? Generous. Generous, okay, yeah. Wholesome. Wholesome. That's a good word. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. I like that. Gentle. Gentle. Compassion. Passion? Compassion. Compassion. Okay. Great. Any other words? Goodness. Patience. Patience? Great, great, great. Yes. Goodness. Goodness. Um, selfless. That come to mind when you think of goodness? And maybe, um, did somebody say gracious? I know someone said generous, that's on my paper. But um, goodness is, is a, it's a word that, that I think we all can master, and we're going to talk about that in depth. Um, I like to say Happy Mother's Day to the mothers in the room. I think, that, is this like my designated holiday to preach? Is this like my designated holiday to preach? I need to have me some kids so y'all can stop making me preach. Before. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to the mothers in the room. Um, happy Mother's Day to, to my mom, who gave me a phone call this morning and said, who stole my flowers? <laughs> See, for the, I don't know how many years, I guess for my adult life, which is, which is probably like 10 years, I've always put flowers on my mom's, either her, her counter in the kitchen or by her bed, and um, she wakes up to those. Well, this morning I was, in my word, <laughs> God stole your flowers. <laughs> but she called me and she called me out and said, who stole my flowers? And I didn't wake up to any flowers. So um, I'm going to try to push through this word. I'm going to do what God has for me to do, but then I'm going to jet out of here and go take my mama some flowers <laughs> at church, at her church. Um, and I, I love that lady. She's she's the everything of my life. But um, I know each and every person in this room probably feels <coughs> something similar for their mother. And um, and, I, and I just want to say Happy Mother's Day. As we talk about goodness, y'all are good. Y'all are great. You're amazing. There's no word to describe the mamas in the room. Happy Baby Mama's Day. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs>
Okay, so let's go back to the goodness. Let's go back to the goodness, okay? Um, <laughs> for, for some of us, the, the, the fruits of the Spirit, especially for something like goodness, it, it, hasn't, it might be a difficult area for some of us now. It maybe haven't always been difficult to be good to people. But some of us might have been damaged in that area, right? Maybe you've been through some things. Um, I used to be patient, but some people got on my nerves. So I, I've been damaged there. Um, I used to love, but, but someone damaged me. And I, I struggle now with, with perfecting that fruit. I used to be good to people, but some jokers weren't good to me. <laughs> and I struggle with my goodness. Sometimes we, we have these fruits of the spirit, but our flesh gets in the way and, uh, because our flesh has been damaged and wounded. And we don't implement our fruits the way we're supposed to because the damaged area is, is in the way. But as I encourage myself, because I promise you I'm encouraging myself right now, I want to encourage you all and, and tell you that don't let the seasons that you've been through determine the value of the seed of your fruit. Don't let the seasons that you've been through determine the value of the seed of your fruit. And what I mean when I say that is that some of us, some of our fruit has been through some storms. Some of our goodness, our love, our patience, our peace, our kindness has been through some storms. It's been through some, some droughts. It's been through some wintertime and some scorching summers. And there might have there might be some areas that's damaged. It might be some damage that's holding up or putting your, your goodness at halt. But I, I'm telling you today that don't let what you've been through determine the value of the seed that's in your fruit. Is that a good word? Yes. yes. Or y'all ain't got to tell me because I already knew it. <laughs> <laughs> but that changed my life. That changed my life. Like, because that's, I, I, I do that. I'm human, right? I deal with things in, in the natural. I deal with things in my environment. And I don't want to be good no more because somebody did something to me. And that's, that's not what fruit of the spirit is. That's not what goodness is supposed to be. Um, there's a seed inside of that damaged fruit, that bruised fruit that still can produce. The seed inside of your fruit that is wounded can be a greater fruit than that fruit actually is if you just continue to plant your seeds of goodness. We can't withhold our goodness because we've been through some things because that's, that's not being like Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, can we go to Titus 3.14? And uh, can I just say one good thing that happened to me today as we talk about goodness? Uh, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say as Pastor Amber, I am totally technology driven. I have a Bible on my phone. I have a Bible on my tablet. I have a Bible on my computer. But I don't really have a good Bible. So for the last whatever years, I came here and I take my whatever I'm going to put in the in, Pastor Chris's Bible. <laughs> and that's what I bring up here so I can look holy. <laughs> and I sit right here like in mine. Like I've been reading it every night. <laughs> but I just want to look like somebody. <laughs> I, I put my scripture in his Bible. But today, and I did the same thing today. I came, I came in, and I put my cards in his Bible. And as I'm back there in, her, in the intermission part, um, he comes and he takes my, I mean, his Bible <laughs> and say, here you go. You can use this one. And he got me a Bible that says Pastor Amber on it. Oh. 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 And then I said, hold up, I need my notes. <laughs> and he said, I already put it in there. Like that man right there. <laughs> Your goodness change my life. That's what goodness do. Goodness make other people happy, right? right? When people are good to you, it make you happy. Yeah. Did it make you happy too? It made me happy. It's, oh my God. Goodness is good to <laughs> it don't do, it, It's 
not only impacting the person that you're being good to, but it, it, it does something good for you. Like, I can turn my day around just by going out to be good to somebody. Have you ever did that before? Yeah, yeah that, that's later on my notes. Let me, let me follow my notes. Okay, so um, Titus 3.14. In my, my, my Bible. <laughs> <laughs> it says, oh, shiny. You, you hate it? Oh, I hate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It says, our people must learn to devote themselves to doing what is good in order to provide for urgent needs and not live unproductive lives. Not live unproductive lives. In the King James Version at the end, where this version has said unproductive lies, it says unfruitful. <clears throat> so learn to devote yourself to good works, is what the King James says, um, so that you won't be unfruitful. And I, I'm going to tell you why I like this scripture, because it lets me be in, in control of this thing a little bit. <clears throat> um, one thing that I, I, I love is having the ability to control my, my, my outcome. Um, for example, let's look, at, let's look at having a test by your, like you do the test, you sit down and you study all whatever for the test and then you sit down and you take the test you are, are somewhat in control of those results, right? Because you apply the time and the devotion to it. I hate group assignments. Hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. Why? Because someone else has the ability to control my outcome, my results. Like their lack of devotion or, or, or something can affect what I'm doing. I don't, I don't like that. I, let me control. If I, if I know that I need this, I need this good result, don't let nobody else affect what I'm trying to do. So I, I love this because what it tells me when I'm, when I'm talking about goodness and good works is that it allows me to kind of be in control of it. Like I, I, I can control this fruit and I can do that by devoting myself to being good, devoting myself to good works. And if I lack that devotion, then, then I'm going to be unfruitful is what is what the word tells me. I mean, that's what I made of it. Is that what y'all made of it? Mm -hmm. When you lack the devotion of good works, you're unfruitful. Well, I'm supposed to be fruitful. So I'm going to devote myself to good works. That tells me that I can be good on purpose. The fruit of goodness can be done on purpose. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of, because I, I, I was reading, I'm like, kindness, goodness, isn't that kind of like the same? But I think kindness is kind of like, let's see for, say, for example, telling uh, your, your spouse or your parent or whoever cooked dinner that night, it was good, and then going on to bed, and nothing else. That was a kind word, a kind gesture, but goodness might be saying, that was great, let me go, let me wash the dishes while you go prepare for something else. That's a good act. Um, I devoted myself in that time to be good to someone. And, and that, that you can look at it at different aspects of life, but I think that's somewhat, and I could be wrong, but in my opinion, that's somewhat the difference between kindness and goodness is when you just take the extra step, the extra mile, and do something on purpose. Have you ever planned a good act? Mm -hmm. yeah. You plan it, you put a lot of effort into it? Yeah. Um, I think that's what goodness is all about. Don't, it, goodness is not just waking up and, and saying, as I'm walking down the street, I think I want to be good. Yes, that's good, but put some energy into it. Put some effort into it. Those are, those are true fruits of, of goodness when you truly uh, apply um, that moment of being good. Can someone give me an example? Let's, let's brag on ourselves a little bit. Why not? It's, it's a good thing. Like, if you're doing something good, so talk about it. Can you give me an example of um, something that you planned? A, a good a good act that you plan for someone or, or something yeah, somebody April I sell brownie bites and send children to next 
Okay. Yes, she does. I just like to do it. Right. <laughs> and April, um, often, I mean, I, I hardly see her without these brownie bites. She takes her time. Uh, I don't know how often, how many times a week do you make them? Not three. Well, most people order them for mm -hmm. special events, and sometimes I just make them and sell them to our house. Right. And sometimes I just give them away so people will then want to order them. Oh. <laughs> she gives them away to us a lot, <laughs> and they always get gone. They're great brownie bites, but um, just I, I, you could tell your story, I could tell your story, but, but a dear friend of April, a dear friend of ours um, in the room, um, used to be a, a dancer, and and she died in a in a car well not a car accident but she was she was hit while she was walking down the highway um, a few years ago, and uh, her name was Lynn, and Lynn inspired us all still to this day, um, but truly truly inspires April to want to to send people to dance school kids to dance school that can't afford it anybody in dance school here kid any kid. Been in dance, any any parents send their kids to dance school? I'm just in dance class. It, it's pretty. It's kind of expensive. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we we thank you for that blessing um, and that planned on purpose good act where she's selling. And that's a plug right there. <laughs> selling those brownie bites, love buttons is what they're called. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, a dollar. A dollar. Two for a dollar. Two for a dollar. today. Next Sunday, Next she's gonna Sunday have so some love awesome. buttons. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> Any anyone else? Um, good planned act. I um, just met this past week the director of one of the um, uh, women's shelters, or actually family shelter for abuse, and I'm going to try to work with her to develop uh, a program to reintroduce. Uh, abused women to touch through massage. It's something that I did in Georgia. I, ha I worked with the women's shelter in Georgia and I went in um, twice a month and gave the abused women massages to reintroduce them to loving touch. Mm -hmm. And I just uh, met the director of the women's shelter here and I'm going to try to develop that program. Here. Amen. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Um, and, and that's it. That's it. A plan, a plan on purpose, act of goodness. Yes, yes, God is going to honor, will always honor when you have those in the moment good acts. We are all grateful for them. There's nothing we cannot discount it. But God wants you to go be up above and beyond at times and actually sacrifice and plan to do something good. And then that leads me into the next point, which is um, what are some characteristics of goodness? And I could think of a lot of words, however, there's three words that, that truly just stood out to me, and that's selflessness, that's consideration, and sacrifice are some characteristics of goodness. It's when we sacrifice ourselves. When we, when we remove us, you, me, and we truly do something for someone else to make them feel good. To sow a seed and, and plant a seed in that moment, our goodness that we have that God gives us has seed in it. And we must plant those seeds into other people. We do that through considering others. We do that through being selfless. And we do that through sacrifice. Amen? Amen. Amen. Any other that, I, that I, is something else sticking out to you when it comes to characteristics of goodness? Good. It's unconditional without any expectation of return. And that's where we get ourselves hurt. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when we do something good, we expect something to return. Right. We do that to ourselves. But. You're right. We do that a lot to ourselves. Yes. yes. Yeah. Good point. Agree. You agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we got to get ourselves out of it. Get ourselves out of it. So we stop hurting our own feelings. I'll be tired of hurting my feelings. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's true of all the things. Yeah, it is. It really we is. have to do all of those with no expectation mm -hmm. of any return other than from, from God. Because that's being like Jesus. Right. Because yeah. Jesus, he's, he's not expecting anything of us. I mean, he might expect something. But not, not when it comes to, we can't repay him for the fruits that he gives us, for the love that he gives us, for the joy that he gives us. It's, it's no, it's, we can't repay him for it. It's he, the ultimate pay it for it. What God right. gives to us, we give out. Exactly. That's good. That's good. That's what, that's what seed planting is all about. And um, 
So yeah, so point, point two, we, we talked about the characteristics. Now let's go to how do we produce or grow this fruit in ourselves? Um, scripture, John 15, 2. One of my, I love this verse, and I hate this verse. You, you got any verses in the Bible that's like that? I love it, but I hate it. Half of them. Half of them? <laughs> right. I, I, got a, I, I love it, but I got a big old issue with this verse, and I'm going to tell you why. The, the, um, the word says in John 15, 2, He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Can anybody guess why I might have an issue with that one? Because you don't want those branches cut off. The pruning. The pruning. Why you always got to take what's good, God? I be over that. I, I worked hard for that. Or uh, that, that was good to me. And you sitting there pruning was good to me. I be mad. Y'all don't be mad about that? Is that just me? You must be mad about it over there because you once said it. Um, <laughs> but, but when you prune something, you better, better break it down for us. You know, when, <laughs> when you go and you cut off specific branches mm -hmm. that you know are the right thing for this plant mm -hmm. to produce the right amount of fruit, you know what's coming out in the end. The plant does. Mm -hmm. You're right. That's Ooh. why God knows, and I kind of know, but I still be mad. Because <laughs> that was good. But that's perfect. That is just right. Um, pruning. When it comes, of course God is going to cut the fruit that, that bears no fruit. Thank you, God, for cutting off the fruit on, on me that bears no fruit. Even when I didn't want to cut it myself. Because sometimes we ignore the bad fruit or we don't, we don't want to do the work to it. So thank you, God, for being in the midst of that. But God, you messing with the good stuff. But great point, Pam, is that because it says that it becomes more fruitful when we prune. You, you got to get some stuff out the way sometimes. Even the good stuff got to get out the way so you can make room for the greater that God has for you. So when we're looking at producing um, this goodness in ourselves, sometimes we got to cut, cut some things and we got to prune some things. Oh, one more thing. If you don't prune, mm -hmm. you're going to make some scraggly fruit. You're going to mess up my <laughs> word. That's what you're going to do. <laughs> 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 so we up here, you want to preach? <laughs> you on it, though. You are on it. That's the truth. <laughs> you got to do the <laughs> Don't you want to turn around? I promise you that's in my word somewhere. I just ain't got to it yet, Pam. It's in your word. Exactly, <laughs> but rotten and messed yeah. up and jacked wow. up. All of that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> back to the word, back to the word, back to the word. You're going to mess me up. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, you you cannot be content with with the goodness you are you have already produced. You cannot be content with the goodness you have already produced because um, it will always require some more sacrifice and some more work to, to produce more goodness. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta do some, you got to. I mean, there, you cannot be okay with saying, okay, I was, I was good enough today or I was good enough this year or I was good enough on my job today, which I struggle with, but I was good enough <laughs> And, and, and I'm okay with that. that that's not okay. You, you have a, a spirit inside of you that is, is, is gonna, it wants to be good. It wants to be good with people, to people. And, and you, you're, you're holding it up when you, when you limit the goodness that you can be. Don't put limits on your goodness. Um, don't be content with your goodness because, Pam, because <laughs> good fruit will, can go rotten or rot when, when, you're not, when you're not nurturing it. 
when you not, when you haven't nurtured it or catch this it can go rotten when you don't use it in its due season yeah when you withhold your goodness because of some things that you've been through because of your issue your issue with someone um you withholding that goodness that you're supposed to give regardless of the circumstance when you keep that fruit planted in the ground where it is not being used yet it goes it goes rotten when you don't use it in this due season amen, amen. i mean have, have y'all seen that in the garden yeah uh uh tammy i'm sure your your fruit hasn't got to a place of being full-blown harvest yet right no. but i bet if you left it out there too long your tomatoes are going to go rotten right there where they were at. And you, exactly. Yeah. And if I don't pull them off, they can't produce more fruit either. Right. They'll rot, and then the plant will die. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and even the, the fruit that you maybe have pulled up, you know, uh, I told my coworker, I think it was on Friday at work, or maybe Thursday, one or two, um, I told him my refrigerator was empty, and um, I couldn't go home and make, make nothing for me to eat. And there's two reasons why my refrigerator is empty. One, it's because I've changed my eating habits. I don't eat a lot of junk anymore. So I don't have junk in my, my house. And if I did have junk, yeah, woo woo. <laughs> if I did have junk, then that bet that junk lasts forever, right? What? It got a, a, a shelf stop of <laughs> 2029. <laughs> it just lasts forever. It don't rot and it don't go bad. My chips can last forever. A uh, can of beans. I mean, I got cans. Of, I, my mama got some cans in her cabinet that just been there since I was about twelve, maybe. Um, but that stuff don't go bad. But but the good stuff, the the produce, which is the stuff that I like to keep in my house, um, it goes bad, which is why I have a hard time keeping it in my house too, because um, I'm not always home. Or sometimes when I am home, I'm so tired that I sleep to my very last second that I can sleep and I don't get up in enough time to prepare a meal or a smoothie or something like that. So I, I buy strawberries or something like that and they're so perfect and pretty and you know, they always got them like two for five or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you feel obligated to buy two <laughs> <laughs> because it's two for five. Even though I think if I just got one, it'd be two dollars and fifty cents, but for some reason, <laughs> But we buy that, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to make smoothies all week, and then I don't make them because I'm tired in the morning. Um, and then my, my, my produce go bad, and, and I try to freeze them sometimes, and then they stay in the freezer too long, and then they freezer burn. <laughs> it's like I cannot win when it comes to keeping produce in my house. So that, that's the point that I'm trying to make is that when you don't use your, your fruit of goodness in its due season, it's going to go bad on you. And that, that fruit don't belong to you. It belongs to God. It's for his Amen. use. It's for his purpose. It's for his service. And you're sitting there holding on to something that's supposed to be planted into someone else. Don't be pruning me this morning. <laughs> don't be pruning you this morning. Oh, you felt that one? <laughs> but that, that, yeah, I'm telling you, that's a word because we do that. I got, I got issues with people right now that I'm not good to anymore. But maybe I'm supposed to be good to them because I'm supposed to be good. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there holding on to fruit when I'm supposed to give it to someone because I got an issue with them. I'm praying about that. I'm telling y'all I was going to preach to myself today because we, we're all human and we fight the flesh daily and we fight our mind daily. But if we truly live in the spirit and let our fruits be <laughs> fruitful into other people, we, we can... We can be like Jesus. Amen. 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 Um, I'm, I'm, why am I preaching all day? I gotta go be with my mama, but I got some <laughs> more words. Hours, girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, that was good. That was good. That was it. Okay, so let's go on to that. Was that was how we produce uh, good fruit? We produce it by pruning and cutting and um, and using. I looked up goodness. I looked up goodness a lot, but the first time I looked up, one word that I saw was useful. Um, and when I, when I think about that, 
we got to use our good fruit. We got to make it be useful. That's how we produce because when we use our fruit, we plant the seeds, and when the seeds are planted, there's always a harvest. So use your fruit of, good, of goodness. Um, how to pass it to others. Last scripture. Matthew 12, 33. Either make the tree good and its, and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for the tree is known by its fruit. And that's, I'm, I just said what I'm about to say. Um, use your fruit. How do you pass it to others? You use your fruit. You, you become you, uh, useful. Um, plant the seeds. Plant the seeds into others. Plant the seeds into places. Plant the seeds into strangers, into your loved ones, and even those that you have a hard time loving. Um, um, your fruit should not have any limits limitations or stipulations you should plant and use your seed and your fruit of goodness. That's how you pass it along to others. We've already said that when we are good to people, it makes God feel good. It makes me feel good. It makes that person feel good. It's a cycle. When we spread goodness, it's a cycle. The same way that spreading negativity is a cycle. When we spread goodness, it's a cycle. And we all are impacted by the fruit of goodness. Um, so I got an assignment for you this week. Since everybody else was giving assignments or job, like, y'all hell is doing all kind of stuff this week. I just want to fit in. <laughs> and can my worship band come 